France, home of Babar, the lovable elephant who becomes less lovable when you remember that in the books he married his cousin. That's right, your childhood elephant hero was a cousin fucker. <laughs> the point is, next Sunday, France holds the first round of its presidential election, and if you're thinking, well, why should I care about that? The truth is, it is way more important than you might realise. It's a very important election, what's going to happen in France. Sh it's the future Xi of Europe, basically. <laughs> Overwhelmingly, France is the election that matters. Well, these French elections take place at the crossroad of European history. It's really defining Europe's fate. That's right. The fate of Europe rests in the hands of a country that looks at snails and says, I have got to get you in my mouth. <laughs> But it is not an exaggeration to say that post-Brexit and with a wave of far-right populism sweeping Europe, the fate of the EU may hang on this election. Multiple candidates support a French Brexit, and the consequences of that would be steep. And frankly, it's not bragging, but if France is out of the EU, it's the end of the EU and the end of the Eurozone. Uh, so a lot of things will depend on the result of the French elections. It's true. This could be the most disastrous French exit in history. And that is acknowledging that a French exit normally refers to drinking an entire bottle of red wine and then leaving the party with the host's wife. <laughs> so, so this is a critical election, or technically, two critical elections. The election takes place in two rounds, one on April the 23rd, the next on May the 7th. The first round will see all the candidates compete for votes. In the second, assuming nobody got more than half the votes in the first round, the top two contenders will face off. What a ridiculous system! Where are the 51 individual contests that allot points based on outdated demographic data that can result in a decisive loser in the popular vote count somehow winning? That's just stupid! Well, go easy on France. They're still working out the kinks in their democracy. And this, this election comes at a, a time of great volatility. France has suffered a string of major terror attacks, their unemployment rate is hovering around 10%, and their current president, Francois Hollande, isn't even running for a pretty good reason. The latest opinion polls have come out. Uh, Francois Hollande is at an all-time low. I mean, he even got close to zero here, didn't he? Get ready for it. Uh, according to this poll, only 4% wow. of French people are satisfied by mm. Francois Hollande's presidency. 4%. Wow. 4%?! <laughs> To put that in perspective, apparently the very lowest album score in Metacritic's history is 15% for Kevin Federline's Playing With Fire. <laughs> An album about which Billboard raved, in general, Federline enunciates well. <laughs> but even without Hollande running, his socialist party is divided and struggling, with one early contender to replace him, Manuel Valls, so widely disliked that this happened. It happened an hour ago in this cafe behind me, Cafe Breu, well known to Strasbourg residents. A man approached Manuel Valls and threw flour at him. Look, anywhere else, it might be a bad sign to have flour thrown at you, but in a country where pastries have greater constitutional rights than people, it is technically possible that that was actually an honor. So, so who is running for this important job? Well, well, there are actually 11 candidates at the moment, and we'll get to the main ones in a minute. But first, you're going to want to meet some of the outsiders. Uh, there is Jacques Cheminard, a conspiracy theorist who once said that the Queen of England was involved in international drug trafficking, <laughs> and whose platform includes a plan to colonize Mars, which he explained magnificently. Aujourd'hui, on n'a pas de vraie politique de l'espace. On traîne des vieux objets brinque-ballants comme la vieille fusée de Star Wars. Alors ça marche au Star Wars avec l'espèce d'ours et euh, la Rise Skywalker, mais ça marche pas dans la réalité. You're right. He just said Larry Skywalker and that weird bear, presumably meaning Chewbacca, and I really think that should have been those characters' names instead. Hi, I'm Han Solo, this is Larry, and this is our friend, that weird bear or whatever the fuck he is, I don't know. Then, then there is Jean Lassalle, who, as you can see, is almost offensively French. He, he once went on a 39-day hunger strike to protest a threat to jobs in his constituency, and his campaign ads are mesmerizing. He rides on a train in moody black and white, works on his farm, dances around, and then mows a hillside shirtless. His entire life seems like an attempt to win the game show called So You Think You Can France. <laughs> but the thing is, that there are currently 
four main candidates with a real shot at getting to the second round. Uh, there is Francois Fillon, uh, the former French Prime Minister. Now, he was once the leading candidate, but has since fallen back in the polls thanks to Penelope Gate, uh, which sounds like a scandal involving selling weapons-grade uranium to Penelope Cruz. <laughs> but, but it actually involves Fillon allegedly paying his wife Penelope and children hundreds of thousands of euros of public money for little or no work. And the accusations don't stop there. There are reports he may have breached electoral rules after receiving a donation of two suits that together cost 13,000 euros. I am perfectly allowed to be given a suit by a friend. It's not against the law. Oh, you're right. That is a completely normal thing for adult friends to do. <laughs> Happy birthday, friend. I've got you two suits that cost about $7,000 each because that is a non-suspicious amount to spend on a gift for a friend. How not weird is this? Couldn't be not weirder, right? So the French public turned on Fillon, and you will never guess how they expressed their anger. Moments before he took the stage at a rally, you'll see he was uh, hit in the face with some flour. Uh, we can see images of that happening right there. Now, uh, apparently he had a spare suit, luckily for him. Oh! It just doesn't look great to whip out a brand new suit when you've been essentially accused of having been bribed in suits. Maybe go for a t-shirt and shorts there. Now, now next, uh, there is far-left candidate Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who uh, is anti-EU and pro-high-tech campaign wizardry. Answering the eternal question of how to be in two places at once, presidential candidate Jean-Luc Mélenchon has embraced holograms. Where am I? In Lyon. And now in Paris. Cool. That, that was both very lame and very costly. It's like finding out your uncle's detachable thumb trick cost him $400,000. And that, that brings us to the two current frontrunners. And first, let's deal with Emmanuel Macron. Polls suggest that he is the favourite to win the presidency, which is actually impressive, considering he's never held elected office before. He's a former banker who served as an economic advisor to Hollande. And if you are falling asleep just listening to me describe him, you're not alone. Mr. Macron, who is neither left nor right and is generally inoffensive to the entire population, is not super attractive to anyone. Ouch! <laughs> He is generally inoffensive and not super attractive to anyone. That makes him sound like he's the guy who played the main character on How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> this man, and this is true, has no name. <laughs> Macron has a centrist policy that is pro-business, pro-Europe, and aimed at boosting France's economy. But the most interesting thing about him might be this. Emmanuel Macron was once a small-town boy from Amiens who met his future wife here at school. The only twist is that she was his teacher. It's true. He married his French teacher who is 20 years older than him. And as a result, Macron, a 39-year-old man, now has seven step-grandchildren. And I'm sorry, but a man in his 30s suddenly ending up with seven step-grandchildren sounds like the plot of a direct-to-DVD Ashton Kutcher movie called Even on a nine-hour flight, this movie is unwatchable. <laughs> And by the way, if you're wondering, did Macron get any baking ingredient thrown at him during the campaign? Well, what do you think? <laughs> Emmanuel Macron just got hit in the head with an egg. So, to recap, that is two cups of flour and now an egg. Now, I don't know if the French people are any closer to picking a president, but they're about halfway to making a decent crepe. <laughs> and that, that leaves us with Marine Le Pen, Macron's biggest challenger. And honestly, she is the main reason you should be invested in this election. The Le Pen name carries a lot of baggage in France. Her father was Jean-Marie Le Pen, who co-founded her party, the National Front, and he is a deeply unpleasant human being. Jean-Marie Le Pen famously dismissed the Nazi gas chambers as a mere detail of history. The courts have repeatedly found him guilty of questioning the Holocaust. 
Oh, that's just a taster. He also said of one Jewish critic, we'll put a batch in the oven next time, which is the kind of vile, horrific anti-Semitism that gets most people permanently banished from society, as well as an Oscar nomination for directing Hacksaw Ridge. <laughs> now, now, Marine Le Pen actually kicked her father out of the party and has worked very hard to rehabilitate the National Front's reputation and present a softer image. And to listen to one French voter, it seems to have worked. Why vote Front National? It's simple. It's Marine Le Pen. If it were her father in charge, it would be no, because he's a crazy old man. Back then, there were skinheads, thugs and fascists in the party. With Marine, it's not like that at all. There's an elegance, a bit of restraint. Yeah, but elegance presentation does not negate poisonous content. A Klansman is still a Klansman, even if you slap a monocle and a top hat on him and give him a cane. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Take off that sheet. I fucking knew it! I fucking knew it! You're a monster, Peanut! You're a monster! <laughs> the, point is, the point is, Le Pen is particularly popular among young people in France who have a, a high rate of unemployment and have responded to her promises to institute programmes to give them jobs and encourage a national preference in employment, making it more expensive for businesses to hire non-citizens. But beneath her slick presentation, Le Pen's message is vicious. A few years back, she was asked about immigrants in France, and while her answer started well, it quickly deteriorated. Moi, je suis extrêmement tolérante et hospitalière. Vous l'êtes vous-même. Est-ce pour ça que vous accepteriez que 12 clandestins viennent s'installer dans votre appartement Vous accepteriez pas Bon, et que, de sur quoi ils changent le papier peint et, et que même pour certains d'entre eux, ils volent votre portefeuille et qu'ils brutalisent votre femme Hold on. Brutalizing your wife and stealing your wallet, I get. That's just boilerplate racism. But people are coming to take my wallpaper <laughs> is something a crazy person says. No one wants your wallpaper, you catastrophically weird person. <laughs> and while France is a proudly secular society, some of Le Pen's proposals would take that to the extreme. Should Muslim people be allowed to wear headscarves? No, I'm opposed to wearing headscarves in public places. That's not France. It's not just headscarves. Le Pen says she would ban yarmulkes in public, any conspicuous symbol of religious belief. Would a Sikh person allowed to be wear a turban? No, not in public. We don't have a lot of Sikhs in France. We've got some. But we don't really hear much from them or about them, which is good news. Is it? Is it? That is such a reprehensible thing to say about people you hope to govern. That, and I never thought I'd say this to someone because it doesn't really make sense. I hope someone steals your wallpaper. <laughs> I, I don't know why they would, Marine, but I hope they do. The truth here is, though, Whatever the result of this election, Le Pen has already dangerously normalized the National Front, winning seats at the local level and even a few in the legislature. And one of the frustrating things about watching this unfold from America is this feels a little like deja vu. A potentially destabilizing populist campaigning on anti-immigrant rhetoric who rages against the elites despite having a powerful father and inherited wealth, even as all the experts reassure us that there is no way that this can possibly happen. The truth is, she's not going to win, because in the second round, everybody will unite against her. I would think that most people, it, it doesn't matter which political colour, will vote for Macron just to block the way to Marine Le Pen. She will not win. We will not have in France another Trump election. She is not named Donald Le Pen. She is just Marine Le Pen. She will not be elected. That is the kind of reckless overconfidence you normally only see in a period piece movie about a tragedy. Why, the Hindenburg is the safest form of travel there is! I'd like to see static electricity even try to set this ship on fire, I tells you! But I would not be so confident, especially because while turnout in French presidential elections is normally around 80%, this time polls show that around a third of French voters might choose to abstain. And if they do that in the second round, Le Pen's very motivated voters could put her in office. And that could be bad for a lot of people. So please, France, I, I would like to try and convince you not to sit this election out. And to do that, let me appeal to your innate French sense of superiority over the US and Britain, which is, and it pains me to admit this, not entirely misplaced. Real French croissant are buttery pillows of perfection, whereas the American croissant is an ungodly abomination. 
Your, your French wines are magnificent. Certainly superior to British wines, which taste like Michael Caine urinated in some grape juice. <laughs> You in France love nothing more than acting like you are better than Britain and America. Well, now is your chance to prove that. Because we made populist, nativist choices with Brexit and Trump. And to be honest, it's not working out so great for us so far. <laughs> and now you have a populist, nativist choice of your own. And just imagine how superior you can feel if you don't make the same mistake that we did. And I really want to convince you more, but I know you don't like big, gaudy gestures. So allow me to convince you in the elegant, restrained manner that you prefer. Please, please, please join me, France, at a cosy bistro. Jo join me at this bistro. And let us drink wine, listen to accordion music, and smoke into each other's faces. Bonjour la France. Je suis qu'un anglais qui parle dans une émission de télé américaine de la République française. En gros, c'est comme de la kryptonite française. C'est la raison pour laquelle je vous parle en français. Même si je sais que maintenant, votre belle langue ressemble à une remake d'Amélie par Guy Ritchie. Mais s'il vous plaît, écoutez-moi. L'Angleterre et les États-Unis ont fucked up. <rires> ne fucked pas non plus. Marine Le Pen est, euh, comme on dit en français, une trou de cou démagogue. <rires> une monstre ou trou de cou démagogue. Vous valez mieux que ça. Ceci est votre chance d'être à la hauteur de la philosophie des Lumières et montrer au monde entier que les idéaux français de liberté, égalité, fraternité vont ensemble comme... Euh, euh, Larry Skywalker et euh, bien sûr, l'espèce d'ours. Au sacro la France, vous êtes notre seul espoir. C'est tout pour ce soir. À la semaine prochaine. Bonne nuit, mon amour.